file thing. Ready? Rolling. Okay, sir. All right. Oh. Hammer, hammer, hammer. My name is uh, Charles N. Gray. I'm a 30-year employee of Cannon Mill, and I'm also a minister, pastor in a uh, church in Huntersville, uh, Chapel Baptist Church, and I'm also uh, very involved in trying to get the union in Cannon Mill for the last 17 years, and uh, we failed every time, but wanted to say that the ministers of this area have always uh, sort of been involved and they're concerned about trying to get a union uh, in County Mill whereby it would be able to help the people that do work there. Why is there so much belief in labor, so many labor circles that the churches have been against the unions? That's what I was wondering about. Well, one of the reasons because this is uh, uh, one of the things that management has, has taught people and they have been able to Sorry, could you start that out and just repeat my question and your answer? All right. The, the reason that, uh, because people in management have told people that the, the churches were against uh, the union, which was not true. And the reason they done that, because this would uh, help the people to really not get the union in if their churches, if they felt the churches was against it. Did they have evidence of that? Well, sort of. They've had ministers to really make statements about uh, the union would not help. Uh, personally, they put statements in paper and they've been on television about it. And uh, they've seen those kind of, and it confused the people. They didn't know what to do. How have you been able to counteract that? You've been doing some pretty strong organizations. Well, the, the way that we counteracted it, we have uh, had meetings at churches with members of people that worked in the mill, and we've told them point blank that the ministers were not against the union. This was a decision that had to be up to them. The ministers were not trying to tell them that they didn't need a union. If they wanted one, they had the right to vote it in or vote it out. Now, pardon the question, but uh, I was reading in the local paper, The Independent, and they kind of suggested that uh, the membership was browbeating their ministers. Well, it, it could have been. This was just, when you work for County Mill, I have been there 30 years, and uh, they own, they have control of the independent papers, so they can sort of tell them what they want them to say. And this has been one of their tactics in order to scare people from voting for the union. Now, finally, could you tell me about the 23rd Psalm? The one that the person that wrote it, yes. I'm not, I just, only thing, I, I don't know who wrote it, uh, uh, but being a preacher myself, uh, I wouldn't have changed it. I think we could, because I don't believe in changing the Word of God now, but uh, what they said about Mr. Fishgiving might be true. He's only been with us about eight months. Uh, but what people have got to realize and do today, in order for us to ever uh, better ourselves, we got to do it ourselves. We can't depend on the company to do it, and uh, we've had three chances, and we've all let them slip away. Now, finally, could you talk about yourself as a worker and also a minister? How does that kind of work? People generally want to put you in two <coughs> different pack, uh, pockets and... Obviously, you are kind of, if you'll pardon the word, a worker priest. Well, uh, one thing that I've tried to do by working at County Mill, I've uh, tried to be an example to people, uh, not black, only the white and black people, and to, to try to live a life that people could see Jesus in my life. And I've always tried to tell people to, you've got your own mind, you know what you need to do, and you ought to do it. And, uh, and things have worked out real good. I've always been blessed to, to get off of my church or anything that I needed to do for the church. I've never had a problem out of that. And I think that's the reason the Lord has blessed me to be able to do that uh, because I've always stood for what I believe was right. And do you feel that uh, the blacks have, I know they've had a significant part in this whole new union drive. Do you think there's any reason for that or how do you feel about that? Well, I, I think so. Uh, 
I wouldn't say that I, it, was, it was balanced out a lot this year uh, with blacks and white standing up, uh, speaking out, and just telling it just like it is. And uh, that made a big difference. It wasn't just more whites and more blacks. It was uh, pretty well balanced out on both sides. And, and you've been is, there for 30 years. Could you just tell us how you came in and then what happened, the different jobs you've had? Well, in 1961, I started working on the yard. Uh, that was basically all the jobs that, that black people could get at that time. And then in 1967, I went on the inside as a uh, receiving clerk, and from there and there for a heister driver. And now I'm a receiving clerk and a heister driver, and uh, almost have made 30 years there working in the plant. In 1961, uh, I started, and in, in, uh, the year of 1991, December 7 will be my 30th year. Could you talk about changed relationships between the races in the mills, if you've seen it? There is a very good relationship between blacks and white in the mill at this time. And uh, one of the, this is one of the, the taxes that, that Cannon Mill tried to use. They tried to make this thing a race issue, which it wasn't, because blacks and whites are basically working on the same type job, making the same type money. And when they cut blacks, they cut whites. And so it, that's not it. Uh, the racial relation with whites and blacks is very good in Cannon Mill at this time. Well, now that's contrary to what a lot of Southern, and I was born here, oh, yeah. Southern people thought about. Uh, what they call lint heads would never accept blacks in the mill. Mm -hmm. Obviously, they have. Oh, yeah. Uh, do you have anything to say about that? Well, there's just been a good train. Basically, a lot of the blacks and white people have been brought up and raised up together in this community, and they know one another, and they work good together. I mean, I don't care whether it's black and white. You're going to have some folks not going to be able to work nobody, but there is a very good relationship between blacks and whites in County Mill at this time. Okay, Judy? Could you talk about what the, you know, why people are organizing right now? I mean, how you've seen what the treatment is like, and why why people have finally sort of got it together to say, okay, I'm ready. Or is it a union? Yeah. Okay. The the reason that they wanted a union is simply because of the way they've been treated. There are many people in the mill who have lost their jobs, they've been cut, they they have been they've lost. Some women were making anywhere from seventy-five to eighty dollars a day. They've been cut uh, to fifteen to twenty dollars a day, whereas they own a, about a fifty-five dollar uh, pay scale. Uh, there is no fairness in the way they promote people. They do it on a what what I call a buddy buddy system. People that they want on that particular job, somebody that they can use, and uh, and and this is this is one of the reason that they wanted a union so they'd have somebody to represent them. At this time, we have nobody to represent us. You see, you can take your problems to management. They tell you that they will get back to you, and they never do. So we needed somebody to help us. So this is why people were more willing to organize and to try to get a union, more so now than they did in 74 and 85. Well, you know, we've, um, we're doing a project about history. And one of the things that we're looking at is early uni unionizing efforts and so the strike. And we've been told again and again that the company has been using history, like those movies and the captive audiences, and histories of strikes to frighten people. <coughs> Could you, can you talk about those, those movies and the captive audiences and how they've been using history as an in to intimidate people? Yes, they use their, one of the latest films they showed us was about the strike in. Could you start again and look right at me? Oh. Yeah, and the you're on the pulpit. <laughs> one of the films that they showed us uh, a few days ago was about the strike that happened in uh, Virginia, the coal miners. And they showed, uh, you know, all of the negative things about it in order to scare and intimidate people. And uh, this is one of the tactics they use in order to, to put fear into people's minds. Say, if you get a union, all it's going to be about is strikes and dues. And, and uh, this was a very derogatory film that they showed because uh, by us not ever having a union, uh, we really don't know what the outcome would be until we get one. Were you in that movie? No, I, I wasn't in the movie. I, I just, mean, were you there in the I audience? was there. At, this is one of the things that the company showed uh, the employees uh, a few days before the election. How did you get in there? I gather they... They... 
uh, told us at 7 o'clock that we had to go to a meeting, uh, another one of the union meetings, you know, and uh, this is one of the things. They stop off the jobs for about an hour or so that we might go see these movies uh, to educate us on the fact about how bad the unions are. And they do this throughout the plants until the day of election. Now, I understand that uh, <coughs> some of the union supporters didn't get a chance to see those because they wouldn't let them in because they asked questions. Many people were bought because of them standing up and not believing all of the derogatory things that they were trying to instill into the minds of people. So, therefore, they just they bought them because, see, some folks had enough nerve to stand up and say, well, we won't. We don't believe this, we don't want to hear it, and they didn't go. And so, by them doing that, so they bought them or they wouldn't come. I have one, one more question, and maybe we'll let the car go back. <coughs> the other day, these, last night, we were talking to some people from Plant 4, and they were saying that there's a, a bunch of churches that did go ahead, that were against the union, and they got a new bus, or they got a new organ. You know, they got these gifts, and they were just feeling very, uh, they were really stunned <coughs> by that. We we'll just wait for this car to go by. We got that truck over there, too. <coughs> we'll wait for the door slam, too. Okay, we'll wait for the door to slam. But you look great. Yes. Nice, soft light. Beautiful. I'll show you just a minute. Okay. Door slam. And that, that's you. Okay, clear. All right. One of the things that we've heard is that the church there uh, in town did receive a lot of money for one of the pipe organs that they received, I mean, that they bought. Also, this is a white congregation of church, and also a black church where Reverend P.C. Holland pastors. We were told that Phil Crest Cannon gave him in the amounts of some $45,000. So these things are, are pretty well accurate, and uh, this is one of the reasons that he was so in, uh, not in favor of having a union, because, as again, I say, we understand that he was on their payroll, and so, you know, when you're on the payroll, you're going to kind of stand up and defend where you're getting your money from. What about that union, <coughs> that they call him the union buster, um, is it Donald's brother-in-law? Joe Mingo? Yeah. Well, see, he works with an organization that's called uh, the BNS, uh, BNS Associates. It's, it's a black organization out of High Point. Phil Crest Cannon hired them to go into communities to get reports from people and bring it back. And uh, what their job was to get a report, take it back to your Crest Cannon, and they was to sort of, uh, you know, reevaluate it, or listen, or listen to it, and see what they do. Take it back, say, okay, this is what the people need. But they didn't do that. They changed their job. They, they tried to tell people that we didn't need a union because the union, all the union was about was dues and strikes. And uh, he was one of the the ring leaders of this thing trying to 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 persuade people not to vote for the union. <coughs> That's Joe Mingo. Was it the master? Well, in 1964 was when the, the first black lady, early in the early years, I understand, they used to work there, but they started hiring them again in 1964. Black women couldn't work in the mill. So there have been a lot of changes as uh, far as blacks getting position jobs now that when I first started in 1961, you could not get. The only thing you could get in the county mill was working on the yard, cleaning spit tools and bathrooms, those uh, very low-paying jobs. That was the only job that you could get. But now uh, they will allow, well, you know, uh, there was a law that was passed by a Supreme Court where it said you had to put so many blacks in jobs, and then once they fill that quota, they don't do that anymore. So if a person gets a job in County Mill now, uh, it's because uh, he's one of those type persons that is willing to do anything the company say, lie, manipulate people to do anything that the company wants them to do, betray them, and those type things. So it's very difficult for a person that is really 
save to try to get a job and lie and do what kind of men would have you to do. They wanted me to take a, a, a supervision job. I told them I didn't want them because I could not lie to people and mistreat people in order to make money. I just couldn't do it because it just wasn't part of me. Okay, great. Thank you. About <coughs> uh, <coughs> Jamie, before you take the lights out. <coughs> Rum Tom, this is the world. Dogs, ducks, chickens, and everything else in the world. <coughs> What part of Georgia, Georgia are you from? Did I see a Georgia sign on one of y'all's cars? <coughs> we need 30 Okay. We just uh, uh, Judy? Yes. Yeah. By the vehicle. It's a nice shot. Nice, nice. Judy, 30 seconds? No, I just. 